wanna know what you, yeah, I wanna know what you want. My niggas gon' blow at you, yeah, my niggas gon' blow at you down. Uh, hello, B Plus gang. How nice of you to join us today on this exquisite Paris balcony overlooking the entire city while I order things that I just can't pronounce. All from this bougie upscale restaurant here. And now before I end up having to pretend to look for my wallet and ultimately have you pay for this luxurious candlelit dinner, instead I want to take the time to have a difficult but hopefully very productive and interesting conversation. Yes, you have not been misguided by the video title and thumbnail. Today we're actually going to be talking about the tales of the diddler and his right hand man or a woman I should say. His shorty wop if you will. And that woman is artist Young Miami. Now if you really don't know, in the past couple of months and honestly for the better part of a year now, a lot of Diddy's most disgusting and vile behind the scene acts and behaviors have openly just been exposed to the entire public eye. My behavior on that video is inexcusable. Leading to many of the public figures that closely associated with Diddy throughout his career to being implicated in his debauchery. Some notable names you might recognize are Meek Mill, you deserve it, Daddy. singer songwriter Usher. Back in the days when he was like 10 and I was a little bit older, his older brother, we used to fight over the over the frosted flakes. Ellen DeGeneres. This group of kids had a dream to dance with Diddy. Today that dream came true. And right on topic for today's video, we have Young Miami. Now actually after creating Creating the script for this video, Diddy was captured by the FBI in September of 2024. How they let this hooligan run wild for this long with this extensive history and detailed rap sheet of freak off participations, it's beyond me. But I gotta applaud them because they finally did it. I mean, I've been hearing stories about things that I didn't even understand with what was going on at these Diddy parties. Even when I was just a kid growing up in this cruel world, the FBI got in there and they put Diddy in handcuffs, confiscating all of his baby oil and hopefully putting an end to his reign of terror. I never could have imagined that one man would find a need to be in possession of over a thousand or ten thousand bottles of baby oil was it? But if any man would be that guy, it would be P. Diddy. So uh, good riddance, man. I'm not gonna lie. I mean, the federal court system has a conviction rate of like 90 something percent. So it's most likely GG's for Diddy at this point. But uh, back to the main topic of the video. So some of these other people I mentioned were certainly close friends and associates of Diddy. You know, these guys probably attended a good handful of Diddy parties in their day. But where Young Miami differs from the rest of these cats is that she was probably the closest person to Diddy leading up to all of his best bad deeds being aired to the public. So the two of them had this very weird relationship where they were somehow outwardly one of the biggest power couples in hip hop, but the both of them were also both openly sleeping around with whoever they wanted and being messy in the public eye. Diddy also got another woman pregnant when they were allegedly still together. So this led to everybody for a while calling Young Miami a glorified side chick. That's kind of what it looked like for a while. And Young Miami would get into a fight with one of Diddy's other mistresses on Twitter. She's out here like defending the spot in his in his hierarchy or something. I mean, with what we know now, can we even call what they had a real relationship at this point? You know, I can't answer that, but I think it is safe to say that Young Miami was a staunch supporter of that lifestyle that Diddy was able to offer her. You could even make the argument that she was his biggest supporter. So, OK, all right. Follow me here. If we're thinking logically, we understand that Diddy was able to somehow coerce and pull a bunch of different people that were somehow connected to him on a purely business level and he drugged them into his debauchery. Then it's safe to say that the people within his true inner circle, if not participating in what was going on, they definitely had to have an idea of what was happening. That means for the most part, right? We can assume that Young Miami participated in them Diddy parties and she indulged in the the lifestyle that Diddy offered her with the Birkin bags and the vacations and the freak offs. And this is kind of corroborated in these court documents that were shared a couple months ago. And if the information from those documents are to be believed, then Young Miami is actually way further implicated in relation to Diddy with all of his illegal dealings than we might have initially thought. Like she unironically may have contributed to helping him maintain his revolving door of unsuspecting and vulnerable women. Ladies and gentlemen in the B plus crowd, there has been a break in the clouds. It's a bit different from all the other days because after months of radio silence from young
Young Miami and her camp after fans and onlookers demanded some much needed answers and explanations to their questions. She finally did the thing and spoke up, breaking her silence. And her and good friend of the channel, Saucy Santana, would kind of give us some answers. I mean, that. I guess. Now they ended up doing this whole dramatic podcast episode where young Miami was able to tell her side of the story amicably and unchallenged. Right away before even watching this video, I'm kind of going in with a bit of side eye, just from the whole framing of this thing. Having your best friend ask you a bunch of softball questions is certainly an interesting way to go when you're trying to answer for this sort of thing. Because off rip, I know that because of whatever relationship she has with Saucy, he would want to let's say intentionally do something that could make young Miami look bad like press her on a question. And I was genuinely trying to go into this whole interview with an open mind despite reading all of those court documents before you know so I wouldn't just write young Miami off and potentially victim blame her but the real problem starts to kick in for me at least when I realize that young Miami is doing what many public figures tend to do and is trying to take control of the narrative and ultimately rewrite history. And it's a lot of allegations and so I think that's what makes people feel like, well, since you were so heavily involved, you were a part of these things or you were around these things. So what was your experience like dating him? And I met Didi when the world was celebrating him and giving him his flowers while he was alive. So I was celebrating him with the world. And I just feel like everybody's trying to crucify me for it. Like you was, you was his biggest advocate, you was his chili, but I was just celebrating when the world was celebrating him. Mm -hmm. So why am I being crucified or why am I being separated? I even asked him like, why you fucking with me? Why you fucking with the city girl? Why you coming into my room? Like it's easy to create the, the, the idea of beauty that a man would be appealed by. So what makes you special? Is it because you had some fame? No, Diddy's messed with way more famous women than you. Like, pull out this, self-respect is the kryptonite of rich niggas. <laughs> they don't wanna be around you when you're saying, ah, I'm not doing that. <laughs> ah, listen, I don't wanna be in a free call for an orgy. I don't want to do that, I've never done that. That's beneath me. How far you go with these men in the industry will revolve around how little you say no. I hate to say it because usually he does add a tinge of a misogynistic slant to the things he says, but academics is actually saying a lot of facts here. Even in 2024, it's no secret at this point that a lot of these Diddy types, so like I'm talking these wealthy individuals and label executives. I mean, you got fucking, uh, what's his name? Russell Simmons fleeing to Bali or something. A lot of these kind of people, they either want vulnerable people or people that aren't very likely to tell them no. Cause P Diddy be wanting the body and you gotta tell him no. A lot of people laugh this kind of stuff off when it first came around, but actually in these like predatory spaces in the entertainment industry, the only way to protect yourself is to advocate for yourself and to tell people no, even if they promise you luxurious gifts or your very own podcast. For a lot of unsuspecting people who are going into the entertainment industry, many of whom come in starry eyed and are unaware that they the themselves are the commodity that is about to be sold and exploited, they might not even be aware of that whole dynamic going on there. It's definitely a hard dichotomy to wrap your head around, but for man or woman or whatever, it can be true that being exploited is what ultimately gets you to the place where you can have all the fame and fortune, and the whole time you're paying that cost and you might not even know. So that's kind of crazy, but uh, let's continue here. So a lot of the, a lot of the things that people really like say about him, you didn't experience that as in dating. That's not something that you saw. So is that the reason why when all of these allegations and lawsuits came apart, like why didn't you speak? Because I can't speak on something that wasn't my experience. And I can't speak on something that I don't know. I can't speak on these allegations because I wasn't around at the time. I don't know that person and that wasn't my experience. Yeah, yeah, everyone introduce yourself. My name's Ava. I'm a Scorpio. No, no, no. What's your last name? Oh, Ava Combs. Yes, it's, it was breaking news. Diddy adopted a white child. <laughs> I was on the streets. <laughs> and then Papa Combs decided to, that he would like to be a caring man. So then he saw me and decided to pick me up. 
and said to come inside and play with his kids. Just clarify it, because it's, it's crazy out here online. So, so <laughs> I, I played with the kids, and I got permission from your mother, and to say all of that, just to make it, because it's crazy out here. I met Jesse and Delilah when I was six months old. Six. We basically are sisters, um, <laughs> four sisters. of us. So. Yes. And, and it's Ava, mm -hmm. Brioni Combs. Come on. I'm sorry, but I believe that this is actually just blatant lying and like the spreading of some misinformation out there. I think anybody who has paid close enough attention to these Diddy files and the people close to Diddy can see she is lying out of her ass. There's like interviews from back in the 90s of people talking about the crazy sh P. Diddy was getting into. So if P. Diddy allegedly engaged in this kind of disgusting behavior since the 80s and 90s, meaning he has over 30 30 years of learned experience from participating in freak offs and getting other people to do his bidding for him. Even while ignoring the fact that Carisha definitely has her own allegations she needs to face. But what logical sense does it make for Diddy, who at this point is a confirmed serial to magically transform into a well adjusted guy like overnight and then maintain that facade for multiple years as he dated young Miami? And we see them arguing with with his other partners on Twitter. So I just know that's a fact that it was not clean and cut behind the scenes. So I guess while it could be true that Young Miami somehow got preferential treatment and never saw that side of Diddy, how likely is it that she never even witnessed him being a towards anyone else given their close proximity for a multiple number of years i didn't know man like this this girl was like literally in diddy's corner like took a seat in his inner circle you know but she claims to have never experienced that side of him even though diddy is literally known as the party guy behind the scenes i think by trying to make herself sound less liable in the grand scheme of things she is ultimately and maybe unintentionally downplaying or omitting some details and the result is that it ends up kind of sounding like a defense of Diddy. And you know, in hindsight, with Diddy being brought in shortly after this interview was conducted, it really feels like maybe Young Miami was starting to see the walls close around Diddy. And you know, maybe she was trying to distance herself a little bit. You know, just a little headcanon. You know, I'm a crazy man talking. City girl, summer, we tricking it. Deli young, we acting bad. So I felt like I was an essay. I felt like, you know, I came into his world and I was able to like, turn everything he had going on up a notch. So I went into that relationship like on a, on a like more of like, I want to become a mogul and I want to learn up, a, up under you. You know, those, most people just want to get their body done. You want to get a trip. You want to uh -huh. just do that video. No, I wasn't one of them. So with all of the framing she's given us so far, her story is that nothing really inappropriate happened between her and Diddy. They dated for years and she never saw him act how everybody says. And if anything, their relationship was actually a beneficial one because she was able to learn and do business with him. So, you know, ignore any mess you saw on Twitter with her arguing with these other side chicks and baby mamas. <laughs> it's all good now, man. I know this is supposed to be her telling her side, you know, and challenge her truth or whatever. But my guy, this is kind of sounding like some uh, like Stockholm Syndrome 101 casual sweeping for the Diddy man over here without outright saying anything that happened. Next, she really moves on to start talking about her relationship with fellow City Girls member JT and how that whole relationship broke down and what happened when they fell out with each other. Essentially, she says that things got rocky between her and JT and since she was living in Miami with Diddy and JT was living out in LA, that didn't really leave much room for collabing or getting together on just like a cordial meetup just hanging out which is bullshit if you ask me i've recorded music for years sometimes with people halfway across the globe all you really got to do is just send them the vocals or the stems or whatever but anyways i digress i just didn't agree with that statement all of this tension they were having built up to them having a spat on social media and that made the rift that was growing between them even larger but you know our guy ak our guy actually has some very interesting industry insider information that i think adds a bit more context and it makes things make a bit more sense with this surface level story that young miami told us and again i think his observations are actually spot on and he kind of doesn't miss whenever we try to get together it just didn't connect like we'll be on tour she she got her own dressing room i got my own dressing room she riding with her own glam team i'm riding with hey chat what she's saying all i'm hearing is 
how much money has to be spent. But she's not thinking about money. She's just thinking about, oh, we're just not friends right now. When y'all not that profitable, two glam teams, two different entourages. It's just like, ain't no money in the group. When she's already looking around be like, ain't no money here, of course she's gonna choose to be a sugar baby. Your label was about to drop y'all niggas. I, that's why I talked that shit, because I knew it. Don't ask me how I know it. The label was losing a shit ton of money with y'all because they would book shit. Y'all don't show up. Y'all now on the same page. Oh, there's a there's a studio appearance or there's a, there's a studio session. Somebody want to lock in with y'all, but one can't go. They book flights for y'all to go do interviews, but one of y'all can't show up. So now y'all got to just cancel because it looks weird if one shows up. Wow. I actually think that was well said, you know, and it all just makes too much sense to not be true i remember when the city girls first came out their music was virtually inescapable even without being a fan of their music you would hear it and without their contributions there would be no roads paved for the sexy reds the glorillas and the ice spices of the world almost every girl in my high school listened to the city girls wanted to be a city girl whatever that means or had a city girl face so it's kind of crazy that looking back this group that had the culture in such a chokehold basically fell off the earth harder than Christopher Columbus in 1492. The biggest event that lines up with the city girls rapid downfall is that young Miami started hanging around and dating Diddy. And if you ever listen to a city girl song then you might have heard them talk about certain female empowering themes like the bank account size of a suitable partner, living a luxurious lifestyle and owning and buying all of the newest designer garments. But the theory here is that JTC to achieve those things by her own merit you know and doing the thing that got her here in the first place and that she was most known for the problem with young miami meeting diddy is that he acted as an enabler that facilitated a lot of that lifestyle for her thinking logically from her perspective why would i spend hours in the studio making new music to make money when your billionaire boyfriend will fly you on his private jet and give you a podcast on the network he's an owner of and get you all the newest clothes and money and the drugs that you could ever desire and i think that this difference really shows in their world outlook by just looking at the partners that they've ended up choosing in their career jt got with uzi who at least publicly has shown up to a jt concert and supported her music career and her aspirations despite what might go on in their behind the scenes while it might be messy it's definitely not as crazy as young miami shit but they at least give the perception that they have an even kill relationship where they try to build each other up on some normal sh meanwhile young miami got with diddy a guy that could buy her whatever she wanted as long as she winked and he was already way past the point of being successful in his career and then it's like boom once the two of them get together it's almost like we would just see young miami less and less look all right at the end of the day here while diddy is in custody it's not all said and done while we carry on with our normal lives a whole ass investigation is going on in the background and from what i've seen in the most recent developments it's been revealed that there are over 120 accusers of diddy narrowed down from like 400 or 500 or some crazy shit like that and 25 of these 120 were allegedly underage at the point that they had contact with diddy if you get my drift which is all highly substantial evidence and i think just shits all over young miami here because this isn't just like a bunch of random individuals going after diddy like the few diddy defenders would have you believe no dude this is a federal court case that is being backed by by the government and these guys typically don't like to spend money on dumb things so they're not just gonna go into a court case unless they can verify that it ends in their victory the lead attorney on this case is dropping absolute bombshells on us and he says that the case will be revealing a definitive list of diddy's closest confidants and accomplices so who knows maybe our favorite city girl will be making an appearance on that list maybe we'll see mr beast on that list who knows anything can literally happen at this point but anyways what's your guys take on this whole situation here do you think that young miami maybe knows a bit more than she let on in this interview or do you think that she made a good case for her innocence and lack of knowledge whatever your opinion let me know down below in those comments and if you made it all the way to the end of this video maybe consider leaving a like or even subscribing for more goaded b plus content on the channel but if i don't see you down there in those comments then stay safe, of course, and I'll catch you on that next video.